The time traveling tree house nestled within the sprawling branches of maple manure lived Emily, Leo, and Finn, three siblings whose wildest adventures unfolded beneath the leafy canopy. Their secret kingdom. Nestled amidst hidden nooks and gnarled branches, was Whispering Wood, and its crown jewel was the time traveling tree house. One stormy afternoon, as lightning arced across the sky, the tree house crackled and hummed. Suddenly, it lurched, spinning them through a dizzying vortex of colors and wind. When the world steadied, They found themselves amidst roaring jungles and colossal creatures with long necks and thunderous tumps. Dinosaurs. The first time travel stop was prehistoric Pangaea, where they befriended a playful baby Triceratops named Trixie. They learned about the Earth's ancient landscapes, the power of teamwork. As they helped Trixie escape a grumpy stegosaurus and the awe-inspiring silence of a starry night before light pollution, next they landed in a bustling medieval castle, complete with clanging armor, jousting knights, and a princess named Fiona who longed for adventure. They joined a playful sword fighting practice. Helped solve a mystery involving a missing dragon egg, and learned the importance of standing up for what you believe in, even when facing a fire-breathing dragon. Their tour through history took them to other fascinating eras. They helped navigate Roman chariots through bustling streets, deciphered hieroglyphics with curious Egyptian mummies. And even met themselves as giggling toddlers in a Victorian nursery. With each adventure, they collected not just souvenirs but invaluable lessons about courage, kindness, and the unique beauty of every era. Finally, the magical treehouse roared back to Whispering Wood, leaving them breathless and changed. They had walked with dinosaurs, befriended knights, and giggled with their younger selves. But most importantly, they had learned to appreciate their own time, their own friendships, and the magic that lay hidden, not just in history, but also in their everyday lives. From that day on, the time traveling treehouse stood not just as a playground, but As a reminder that adventures, both exciting and meaningful, lay within reach, even without a whirlwind trip through time. And even in their quiet corner of the world, beneath the whispering leaves, their hearts forever danced with dinosaurs, jousted with knights, and learned from the wisdom of ages past. The end. The pirate princess and the talking parrot, a salty and squawking adventure. Princess Penelope sighed, poking a limp pea around her plate. The crystal chandeliers twinkled, echoing the boredom in her eyes. While other princesses learned proper waltzes and whispered court gossip, Penelope yearned for the salty spray of the sea, the tang of adventure in the air. Her only confidante in this gilded cage was Captain Squack, a one-eyed parrot with a vocabulary that would make a sailor blush. Squack perched on Penelope's shoulder. Tilted his head and squawked. Ahoy, land lover! Morning won't fill your sails. Time to trade tiaras for tricorn hats. Penelope's eyes sparkled. 
She grabbed a discarded tapestry, fashioned it into a makeshift sail, and whispered, "Tonight, Captain, under the full moon, we slip into the night." That night, under a cloak of stardust, Penelope and Squack shimmed down the palace wall, leaving behind a trail of dropped pearls and startled guards. Reaching the dusty harbor, they found a rickety raft, its timbers whispering tales of forgotten voyages. With Squack navigating by the stars and Penelope steering with all her pent-up pirate spirit, they pushed off into the moonlit ocean. Their first adventure came with the sunrise. Giggles erupted from a nearby lagoon as mermaids. With her fins glistening with scales, surrounded the raft. Squack charmed them with sea chantays, while Penelope learned mermaid hair dressing, weaving seaweed and coral into stunning underwater styles. Days turned into weeks, each one a new chapter in their salty saga. They followed a crumpled treasure map, dodging grumpy octopi in sunken cities. And outsmarting mischievous dolphins who hid the buried gold. One stormy night, a grumpy kraken with tentacles thicker than masts rose from the deep, threatening to swallow the raft whole. But Penelope, remembering a mermaid song, calmed the beast with a melody of ocean whispers, earning the kraken's begrudging respect. Finally. After weeks of salty wind and sun-kissed skin, they reached a secret cove, rumored to be a pirate haven. But instead of swashbuckling buccaneers, they found a community of peaceful artists, artisans, and storytellers living in harmony with the sea. Penelope and Squack were welcomed with open arms. Their adventures earning them a place of honor amongst the colorful residents. Though she missed her family, Penelope found more freedom and joy in the salty haven than any palace walls could offer. She learned to build boats, repair fishing nets, and even spin yarns taller than the captain's mast. Squack, meanwhile, became the local bard. Regaling everyone with tales of their daring escape and a princess who traded tiaras for treasure. One day, a ship bearing Penelope's parents arrived, sent searching after their adventurous daughter. Tears of joy mingled with salty waves as the princess embraced them, but returning to the palace felt strangely muted. The chandeliers seemed dimmer. The waltz's dollar. A solution, Squack, Captain Squack, landed on Penelope's shoulder. She proposed building a bridge between the two worlds, a haven for artists and adventurers, pirates and princesses united with the spirit of the sea. And so, with her family's blessing and Squack by her side, Penelope became the queen of the open sea. Ruling a realm not of gilded cages, but of salty adventures and stories yet to be told. The end. The boy who could shrink, a tiny triumph of big courage. Toby, the youngest, had always lived in the shadow of his boisterous brother Ben and his seemingly perfect sister Chloe. He felt like a dandelion puff amidst towering sunflowers, always overlooked and underestimated. Until one magical afternoon, everything changed. Toby was chasing an escaped ladybug through the garden. When he tripped on a gnarled root, as he tumbled, a strange tingling sensation washed over him, shrinking him in a blink. When he finally stopped shrinking, 
he stood no taller than the blades of grass. At first, Toby panicked, but soon the garden transformed into a towering jungle. Ants became mighty warriors. Ladybugs turned into polka-dotted helicopters, and dandelions, once pesky weeds, soared like fluffy airships. The world, though miniature, was filled with hidden marvels. He made friends with a wise old spider named Penelope, who taught him the secret language of insects. He learned to ride dandelion fluff, to barter with honeybees for sticky treats, and to navigate the perilous maze of blades of grass. He even rescued a family of earwigs from a hungry centipede. Earning the respect of the entire insect community. However, adventure turned into worry when Toby found Chloe tangled in a sticky spider web, screaming for help. Her screams seemed like thunderous roars in his tiny world. Toby knew he had to act, even if it meant facing his greatest fear, Charlotte. The colossal garden spider. Gathering his courage, Toby climbed Penelope's silken ladder. His heart pounding like a hummingbird's wings, reaching the web, he saw Charlotte loom. Her eyes like glistening marbles. But remembering Penelope's lessons in spider language, Toby sang a tiny song, praising Charlotte's web weaving skills. Charmed by his bravery and respect, Charlotte gently untangled Chloe, saving her with a flick of her silken leg. As Chloe returned to their human world, Toby realized his size didn't matter. He had faced his fears, saved his sister, and earned the respect of a giant spider, all while being smaller than a ladybug. His heart swelled with a newfound confidence, taller than any sunflower. From that day on, Toby no longer felt small. He carried the memories of his tiny adventures, the lessons learned from insects, and the courage that bloomed under the shadow of a spider's web. He was still the youngest, but now he was the boy who could shrink. And in doing so, had grown larger than life. The garden remained a secret wonderland, a whisper in the wind for him alone. But Toby held his head high, knowing that even the smallest of us can weave grand adventures and facing daunting challenges. And sometimes, the only thing you need to grow is a sparkle of courage and a heart the size of an ant. The end. The Lost Song of the Firefly Forest. In the heart of a whispering wood, nestled beneath star-dusted leaves, lay Firefly Forest. Once it gleamed like a galaxy fallen to earth, its fireflies twirling and pulsating in a symphony of light. But that was before the melody dimmed. The fireflies fading to mere shadows, and the forest plunging into an uneasy gloom. Flick, a brave young firefly with a lantern heart, couldn't bear the silence. She longed for the days when dancing sparks painted the leaves silver, and laughter echoed through the trees. So, with a flicker of determination in her wings, she sought out Glimmer, a grumpy glowworm known for his gruffness and grudges, and who, quite frankly, preferred the darkness. We need the lost song, Flick declared. Her light trembling with hope, the song that awakened our magic, that painted the night with starlight. We must find it, Glimmer, or Firefly Forest will forever be lost. 
Glimmer scoffed, his bioluminescence puttering with annoyance. Lost songs are best left lost, he grumbled, especially when they bring trouble along with their tunes. But Flick's pleas, like tiny sparks, ignited a flicker of sympathy in his dusty heart. With a grudging sigh, he agreed to journey with her. Their mismatched glow casting a wavering path through the darkened woods. Their quest led them past lumbering owls with grumpy hoots and playful spiders who spun glittery webs to catch moonlight. They faced riddles from wise tree spirits and dodged grumpy beetles who guarded ancient secrets. Glimmer, despite his grumpiness, proved surprisingly adept at deciphering coded bark markings and navigating tangled vine bridges. Flick, in turn, used her tiny spark to light their way and distract grumpy guardians with dazzling dance moves. After days of peril and prickly pear pie, a surprisingly tasty travel snack, they reached the Whispering Glade, a place where forgotten melodies lingered on the wind. There, beneath a moonlit waterfall, a lone butterfly with wings woven from moonbeams hummed a mournful tune. It was the lost song, once vibrant and joyous, now filled with sorrow and fear. As Flick listened, she realized the firefly's magic had faded because they forgot how to sing. They had grown fearful of the dark, their own inner light deemed by neglect. With a shaky but determined voice, Flick joined the butterfly song, filling it with courage and hope. Glimmer, touched by her bravery, chimed in with a low, earthy hum, the two lights blending into a harmonious melody. The waterfall shimmered, the glade blossomed with starlight, and the lost song soared through the air. Soon, fireflies flickered like scattered stars, their tiny lanterns rekindled, Firefly Forest danced once more, bathed in the light of a renewed song. Flick and Glimmer, weary but triumphant, watched the joyful reunion. Glimmer even had a faint, begrudging smile playing on his luminescent face. They had not only found a lost song, they had found something more. The power of courage, the melody of friendship, and a glow of hope that burned even in the darkest of times. From that day on, Firefly Forest never forgot its song. Its melody echoed through the leaves, a reminder that even the smallest light can chase away the biggest darkness, and that sometimes the best adventures are found with the grumpiest of companions. And as for Glimmer, well... He never admitted it, but he might have even hummed along to the tune every now and then, under the twinkling canopy of Firefly Forest. The End The Talking Teacup In a forgotten corner of a dusty attic, Nestled amongst cobwebs and moth-eaten hats, lived a collection of mismatched teacups. There was Grandmama Cup, a regal china pot with a chipped edge and endless tales of Victorian drawing rooms. Then there was Pip, a sprightly mug covered in polka dots, brimming with boundless energy and silly songs. And finally, nestled between them, sat Rosie, a shy little cop with swirling flower patterns and a heart full of quiet wonder. One rainy afternoon, a curious girl named Alice stumbled upon the attic. As she explored, she accidentally bumped into Rosie, sending her toppling with a clinking clatter. 
but instead of shattering, Rosie gasped. Oh, hello! Do you see me? Alice, wide-eyed and speechless, slowly nodded. Thus began the extraordinary friendship between Alice and the talking teacups. Every rainy afternoon, Alice would sneak up to the attic, where the cups would come alive, regaling her with stories of forgotten feasts and daring adventures. One gloomy day, Grandmama Cup announced, "The Queen's Grand Tea Party. We must attend, even if it means hopping out the window." Pip squealed with excitement, while Rosie trembled with fear. Alice, inspired by the cup's courage, devised a plan. She fashioned a balloon from an old curtain, and one by one, the teacups climbed aboard. Soaring through the clouds, they faced unexpected challenges. A gusty wind whipped Pip's cat away, forcing Alice to dive after it. Grandmama Cup nearly got swallowed by a giant bird, only to be rescued by a flock of friendly sparrows. But finally, they landed gracefully in the palace gardens, just in time for the queen's arrival. As the royal procession approached, the talking teacups hid amongst the bushes. But Pip, overcome with excitement, jumped out. Singing a jaunty polka dotted song, the queen, charmed by his pluck, invited him to join the party. Soon, all the teacups were sipping tea with the queen, sharing stories and laughter. The grand tea party became a legend. The queen loved the talking teacups' infectious joy, and Alice was hailed as a brave friend. But most importantly. The teacups learned that even the shyest can be brave, and even the dustiest attic can hold the most magical adventures. From that day on, Alice's visits became even more frequent, filled with whispered stories, clinking teacups, and the occasional daring balloon ride. And as they sipped their tea, they knew that their friendship. Like a perfectly brewed cup, would last a lifetime. Warmed by kindness, sweetened by laughter, and rimmed with a sprinkle of magic. The end. The wishing waterfall. In the heart of whispering woods, veiled by sun-dappled leaves and a gurgling of hidden streams, recited a magical waterfall, sparkling like diamonds under the forest canopy. It whispered promises of wishes granted, but with a mischievous wink that hinted at unexpected twists. One crisp autumn morning. A chubby squirrel named Nimble scampered through the woods, his beady eyes scanning for buried treasures. He stumbled upon the waterfall, captivated by its enchanting melody. Mountains of nuts! He squeaked, wishing with all his acorn-loving heart. Poof! The ground trembled, and before Nimble's bushy tail could twitch, the forest floor erupted. In an avalanche of hazel nuts, mountains, not meadows of nuts, rose all around him, leaving Nimble buried up to his bushy ears. He clawed and gnawed, but the nuts avalanched had him trapped in his own greedy wish. Meanwhile, Pip, a timid rabbit with ears that flopped like nervous flags, crept closer to the waterfall. Just a touch of courage," he whispered, longing to join the boisterous forest games without trembling. Suddenly, the air crackled with energy, and Pip was no longer shy. He hopped onto a fallen log, 
puffed out his chest like a furry drum and bellowed, Forest France, join my parade! Animals emerged from every nook and cranny. Grumpy badgers top danced on mushrooms. Lumbering bears juggled pine cones, and owls hooted a jaunty marching tune. Pip, the earth's wild wallflower, led the parade through the woods. His timid squeak transformed into a booming command. He even hopped through the thorny bramble patch, emerging and scathed, though surprisingly decorated with tiny berries. The use of the wishing waterfall's quirky magic spread like wildfire. A grumpy badger wished for peace and quiet, only to find himself surrounded by snoring hedgehogs. A wise owl wished for understanding and learned to decipher the language of squirrels, a skill that came in handy during a many not related dispute. As for Nimble, he finally tunneled out of his nut mountain, sporting a nut shell tiara and a newfound appreciation for moderation. Pip, though exhausted from leading the parade, glowed with newfound confidence, realizing that even a whisper of courage can lead to unexpected adventures. The wishing waterfall continued to sing its mischievous melody, reminding everyone that the best wishes are often not what you expect. Every day, whispers of laughter and surprised squeaks echoed through whispering woods, a testament to the magic that lived amongst the leaves, where wishes with their surprising twists brought joy and wonder to the lives of all forest creatures. The End The Grumpy Cloud and the Thankful Snail Grumble, the cloud, was perpetually grumpy. His days were spent grumbling. His showers were grumpy gray droplets. And even his thunder grumbled. No sunshine dared peek through his gloomy cloak. And the world beneath shivered from his icy rain. One day, a tiny snail named Sunny crawled out of a daisy. He looked up at Grumble with glistening eyes. Excuse me, Mr. Cloud, he said politely. Your rain is making it a little hard to see my way to the dandelion patch. Grumble scuffed. Well, why don't you just build a roof, little critter? He grumbled, unleashing a particularly grumpy downpour. Sunny, instead of shivering, smiled. He wiggled his head so the raindrops bounced off his shell like tiny jewels. Oh, but your rain makes the most wonderful puddles for splashing, he exclaimed. And when the sun peeps through, they turn into magical rainbows. Rumble blinked. He hadn't seen a rainbow in ages, not through his own grumpy fog. So, he parted his gray curtain a tiny bit, just enough for a sliver of sunlight to peek through. And sure enough, there it was, a shimmering rainbow arching across the sky, reflected in a hundred sparkling puddles. A strange warmth spread through Grumble's grumbles. He squeezed out a cautious raindrop. Not a grumpy one, but a curious one. It landed on Sunny's shell, then another, and another. Thank you, Mr. Cloud, Sunny beamed. Your rain makes the prettiest puddles ever. And suddenly... A strange thing happened. Grumble felt lighter. His grumbles turned into soft chuckles, his raindrops into gentle showers, 
He wasn't Grumble the Grumpy Cloud anymore. He was Grumble the Grateful Cloud. From that day on, Grumble still sometimes grumbled, but only when needed. More often, he rained happy showers, leaving rainbows and sparkling puddles in his wake. And all it took was a tiny snail named Sunny and a simple thank you to change a grumpy cloud's whole sky. The end. The wishing seeds and a boy who already had enough. John, a prince with pockets overflowing with toys and a castle stuffed with games, was the unhappiest prince in the kingdom. His every whim had been catered to, every wish granted, yet a dull ache persisted in his heart. One cloudy afternoon, a wandering peddler appeared at the castle gates, hawking shimmering seeds radiating a different colored glow. Wishing seeds, the peddler rasped. Plant one and watch your heart's desire bloom. John, desperate for a spark of joy, emptied his piggy bank and bought a rainbow mix of seeds. He meticulously planted them in the royal garden, watering them with tears of frustration. Days crawled by, filled with unfulfilled expectations. Finally, a sprout pushed through the soil, not a vibrant bloom, but a dull gray stalk. Disappointment gnawed at John. I wish for joy, he cried, kicking the gray sprout. That night, a wise old woman with moss-colored hair and twinkle-filled eyes arrived at the castle. John, sullen and sulky, poured out his tale. The woman smiled. Joy seldom grows from wanting more, prince. It thrives on grateful roots. Confused, John followed the woman to the garden. She knelt beside a gray sprout, gently whispering, Thank you for this humble growth, for reminding me that even from the simplest things, life springs forth. John watched, amazed, as the gray stalk pulsed with emerald light, bursting into a kaleidoscope of flowers. Suddenly, joy bloomed in John's chest. He started watering his other seeds, not with wishes, but with thank yous for his cozy bed, his playful pup, and the warm sunlight on his face. Thank you, watered a bud. Birthing vibrant flowers, their scents filling the air with laughter. John learned that day that happiness wasn't a wish to be granted, but a garden lovingly tended with gratitude. From then on, John's laughter chimed like wind chimes in the palace gardens, a testament to the joy that bloomed, not from wanting, but from appreciating the beauty of what already was. The End <laughs> The Magic Mirror and a Girl Who Shared Lily hated looking in the mirror. Her eyes were too big, her hair too frizzy, and her smile never seemed quite right. Each morning, she'd stare at her reflection, wishing for features as polished as the princesses in her storybooks. One dusty afternoon, while helping her grandma clean the attic, Lily stumbled upon a hidden mirror. 
its silver frame tarnished with age. As she wiped the cobwebs away, a soft whisper echoed, Beauty unfolds not in features, but in the kindness they reflect. Lily blinked, surprised. Had the mirror truly spoken? Intrigued, Lily spent the next day looking for her chance to shine. She helped a clumsy kitten across the street, earning a purring thank you. Then, shared her lunch with a hungry classmate, his grateful smile warming her heart. When she finally looked in the mirror that night, its silver gleamed and her reflection glowed with a soft inner light. Her eyes sparkled, her smile reached her eyes, and a newfound confidence radiated from her. The next day, Lily faced her reflection with anticipation. She tried different smiles, practiced playful expressions, and even dared to giggle at her own silly jokes. Each time, the mirror shimmered, reflecting not just her face, but her kind heart. It showed her beauty that wasn't just skin deep, but a kaleidoscope of kindness, generosity, and joy. As days turned into weeks, Lily saw her reflection differently. It wasn't perfect, but it was unique, full of the stories etched by her smiles and good deeds. She saw kindness in her eyes when she comforted a crying friend, warmth in her hair when she held her grandma's hand, and courage in her smile when she stood up for someone bullied. The magic mirror became Lily's secret guide. It wasn't just a reflection, but a window to her soul, reminding her that true beauty bloomed not from vanity, but from the kindness she shared with the world. And that, Lily realized, was the most magical reflection of all. The End <laughs> The Singing Shoes and the Boy Who Danced for Others Billy lived in the world of his reflection. In the dusty mirror of his attic room, he pirouetted and leapfrogged, a graceful dancer lost in a solo performance. But outside, his feet shuffled, his confidence hidden under a layer of shyness. He longed to share his dancing joy, but the fear of applause froze him to the floor. One rainy morning, rummaging through the attic, Billy stumbled upon a forgotten treasure. A pair of worn leather shoes tucked in a dusty trunk. As he held them, a faint melody tickled his ears. Little dreamer, the shoes whispered, Dance for the laughter, not just the after. The words teared something within Billy. Maybe, just maybe, his shoes weren't just worn leather, but a magical invitation. Hesitantly, he slipped them on and stepped out of the attic, the melody growing with each confident stride. His grandma sat in the sunlit kitchen, humming a forgotten tune. Billy paused, his feet glued to the floor. Then, the memory of the shoes whisper danced in his mind. He took a deep breath, and his feet followed the rhythm of his grandma's hum. As Billy danced, the sunlight twirled around him, catching on the worn leather of his shoes. The floorboard sang a gentle counterpoint to his every step. His grandma's eyes, once clouded with melancholy, lit up with a smile brighter than the sun. Her laughter chimed like wind chimes, echoing the melody his shoes hummed. In that moment, Billy truly danced. He didn't dance for applause, 
but for the joy that bloomed in his grandma's smile, for the music that vibrated in the sunlight, for the magic that whispered from his worn leather shoes. And as he danced, the melody swelled, filling the room with an invisible light, the light of shared joy, the light of dancing for others. From that day on, Billy's dancing shoes weren't just a secret passion; they became bridges, connecting him to the happiness of others, one pirouette at a time. He danced for his friends. For strangers in the park, for the moon on a quiet night, and with each dance, the melody in his shoes grew louder—a sweet chorus of shared joy that resonated through the world. Billy, the boy who once danced only for his reflection, found his true rhythm in dancing for others. He learned that the most beautiful applause. Is the echo of joy in another's heart, and the sweetest music is the melody that binds us together, one step at a time. The end. The lost puppy and the boy who gave thanks. Max's heart thumped like a puppy's tail as he cradled the tiny ball of fluff in his arms. Its shivering form, barely the size of his shoe, had stumbled into his backyard, lost and abandoned. He named it Scout, and an instant bond formed between them. Days turned into weeks, filled with muddy puppy paws, chewed slippers. And endless games of fetch. Scout became Max's shadow, his constant companion. But amidst the joy, a dark cloud of worry hovered in Max's mind. What if Scout's owner was searching, heartbroken? What if Max, in his newfound happiness, was holding onto something that wasn't his? His grandpa. Sensing the gnawing worry, sat Max down by the crackling fireplace. You seemed troubled, young whippersnapper, he said, his eyes twinkling like the dancing flames. Max poured out his fear of losing Scout. His voice choked with tears. But Grandpa, he mumbled. Wouldn't it be even worse if I let him go and someone else found him? His grandpa smiled, the wrinkles around his eyes deepening. Ah,、oh, my boy, he said, appreciation is it about holding on to things, but cherishing the moments. We don't own the stars, Max, yet we gaze at them in wonder. We don't own the wind, yet we dance in its song. His words lingered in the air, embers of wisdom casting a warm glow. Max realized his focus on the fear of losing was robbing him of the joy of having found Scout. He decided to live in the present, savoring each slobbery kiss. Each muddy paw print, each joyful bark. One sunny afternoon, as Max and Scout chased butterflies in the park, a frantic call shattered the air. Sparky, Sparky! A young girl, tears streaming down her face, ran towards them, and that's when Max recognized. The lost spark in her eyes, the spark that mirrored his own when he found Scout. He knelt down, gently placing Scout in the girl's outstretched arms. Tears welled up in his own eyes, but they were tears of bittersweet joy. He watched as Scout, tail wagging furiously, 
flicked away the girl's tears. The reunion, a melody of pure happiness. That night, lying in bed, Max looked up at the twinkling stars. He felt a pang of emptiness, but it was overshadowed by a comforting warmth. He had lost Scout, yes, but he had gained something far more valuable. The knowledge, the true appreciation lies not in the fear of losing, but in the gratitude for finding. He had tasted the bittersweet nectar of letting go, and it had enriched his heart more than he could have imagined. From that day on, whenever a butterfly fluttered past, Max remembered Scout, the tiny ball of joy who taught him the profound lesson that sometimes the greatest treasures are found in the letting go. The End the Talking Tree and the Boy Who Listened Tom slammed the rusty gate, the echoes bouncing back in time with his disgruntled grumble. Stupid weeds, he muttered eyeing the overgrown patch by the fence. Every Saturday, this battle with nature awaited him, a chore he despised. He stomped through the tangled grass, pulling up unruly dandelions and gnarled thistles. His back ached, his hands were scratched, and a bead of sweat trickled down his forehead. Why can't they just stay put? He grumbled to the empty air. Suddenly, a soft voice, like leaves rustling in a gentle breeze, whispered, Thank you. Tom froze, eyes white. Did, 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 did that tree just talk? The ancient oak beside him rustled its leaves, a slow, deliberate movement. Indeed I did, young one. Thank you for tending to my garden. Tom stared, mouth agape. A talking tree was the last thing he expected. Even more unexpected than the weed's aggressive growth spurt. But, but, but why? He managed, still dazed. Without your help, the tree sighed, its bark creaking like old bones. The weeds would choke me. Your weeding gives me space to breathe, to reach for the sun. You help me grow. Tom looked at the weeds, no longer seeing enemies but tangled threads in the green tapestry of the garden. He crouched down, pulling up a clump with newfound gentleness. It wasn't a fight, but a dance, clearing space for the oak's branches to stretch, for tiny blades of grass to peek through. As he worked, the sun warmed his back and the air carried the sweet scent of blooming wild roses. He noticed an ant marching purposefully across a leaf, a ladybug basking on a stone, the delicate veins of a dandelion seed floating on the breeze. The garden wasn't just seeds. It was a bustling world, and he was part of it. When he finished, the oak rustled in gratitude. See, young one, helping isn't a burden, but a dance, a song we sing together. Tom smiled, his earlier grumbles replaced by a quiet satisfaction. He wasn't just pulling weeds, he was helping a friend grow, making space for life to flourish. From that day on, chores became less of a battle and more of a gentle melody he hummed with the earth. 
highly watered thirsty flowers, pruned rambling vines, and even learned to appreciate the tenacious weeds. Each pull a tiny note in the song of the garden. And whenever he felt grumbling rising in his throat, he'd glance at the ancient oak, its branches reaching for the sky, a silent reminder, helping grows not just gardens, but hearts as well. The End The Bees Buzz and the Girl Who Made Friends Maya sat alone on the weathered swing, tears stinging her eyes. She felt lonely, adrift in a sea of laughter and chatter. As detached as a solitary dandelion seed carried by the wind, the playground buzzed with the joy of other children, a hive of buzzing friendships, while Maya remained like a lost drone yearning for connection. Suddenly, a frantic hum cut through the air. A fuzzy bumblebee, wings fluttering wildly, bumped into Maya's cheek. It spun in mid-air, dazed and confused. Staying its distress, Maya's tears vanished, replaced by a surge of empathy. The bee reminded her of herself, lost and searching for a place to belong. Gently, Maya cupped the tiny creature in her hands. Its wings thrummed against her palm, a frantic rhythm like a desperate plea. She peered at its pollen-dusted thorax, searching for familiar landmarks. Where are you trying to go, little friend? She whispered, her voice filled with concern. The bee bust a short, agitated reply, then pointed its furry antenna towards a distant field of swaying wildflowers. A memory sparked in Maya's mind. She'd seen a bustling beehive tucked away at the edge of that field, Nestled amongst the golden blossoms, could that be its home? Holding the bee close, Maya walked towards the field, the sun warming her face and the wind carrying the sweet scent of honeysuckle. The bee bust softly in her hands, a trusting rhythm that soothed her loneliness. As they reached the field, Maya sputted the beehive, a humming orb buzzing with life. With a gentle release, she placed the bee on a nearby sunflower. The creature paused, then launched itself into the air. A joyous buzz trailing behind it. It circled Maya once, its wings flashing in the sunlight, then darted towards the hive. A wave of warmth washed over Maya, sweeter than any honey. In that moment, she wasn't lonely anymore. She had helped a friend find its way home, and the act of kindness had filled her empty heart with a buzzing joy. From that day on, Maya looked for lost souls, not just among humans, but in every fluttering butterfly and chirping sparrow. She learned that kindness was the sweetest honey, a nectar that drew friends closer than any playground chatter. And whenever she felt adrift, she'd remember the buzzing symphony of the beehive, a reminder that even a single act of compassion could create a beautiful chorus of connection. The End The Starlight Blanket and a Boy Who Counted Blessings The moon bathed Peter's room in a cold, silvery light, illuminating the endless ranks of sheep, 
marching across his ceiling. Sleep, a mischievous imp, refused to settle on his eyelids. With each bleating, one, two, three, his frustration grew. He rattled down the creaky stairs, seeking refuge in the warm glow of his grandma's kitchen. Finding her by the window, gazing at the star-dusted sky, he slumped onto a stool, defeat in his voice. Grandma, sleep won't come. The sheep won't listen. A twinkle brighter than any star lit in his grandma's eyes. She rummaged in a dusty trunk and emerged with a quilt. Its surface woven with tiny stars, each catching the moonlight like a firefly's glow. Instead of counting sheep, she said, draping the quilt over Peter's shoulders. Count your blessings. Confused, Peter stared at the shimmering stars stitched into the fabric. But how? Grandma chuckled. Her eyes crinkled at the corners. Close your eyes, my little adventurer. Let the warmth of the blanket hug you, and trace the stars with your fingertips. He shut his eyes, the soft fabric whispering against his skin. Slowly, tentatively, he explored the constellations stitched into his night sky. Each tiny star, as his fingertip graced its outline, brought a memory bubbling to the surface. One, he thought, for the warmth of your hugs, Grandma. Two, he whispered, for the smell of freshly baked cookies on a rainy day. Three, he murmured, for the silly songs sung before bedtime. The stars multiplied, each touch igniting a spark of gratitude within him. He remembered the sun-kissed sand between his toes, the thrill of his first bike ride. The firefly lantern lighting his way in the backyard. With each blessing counted, a heaviness settled on his eyelids. Not the weight of fatigue, but the sweetness of contentment. When he opened his eyes, the room was bathed in the gold of dawn. He hadn't noticed Leap's gentle embrace, but the warmth of the sunlight blanket remained. Woven not just with thread, but with a million tiny joys. From that night on, the sheep bleated in vain. Peter, wrapped in his starlight blanket, counted blessings until his eyelids grew heavy, lulled not by boredom, but by the symphony of his own grateful heart. He learned that sleep, unlike sheep, wasn't chased but welcomed with a heart full of thanks for the constellations, both stitched and real, that illuminated his world. The End The Wishing Well and the Girl Who Said Please Penelope scurried through the whispering woods, a tangled vine of braids framing her eager face. Her pockets bulged with pebbles, each one a hope she held tight. Reaching the mossy clearing, she stopped before the wishing well, its green water swirling with secrets. Penelope clutched her first pebble, picturing a shimmering dress like the butterfly wings in her sketchbook. I wish for the prettiest dress in the kingdom, she declared, dropping the pebble in. The water rippled, a silent rejection. Undeterred, she flung in pebble after pebble, 
wishing for glistening shoes, a talking pet, even a castle in the clouds. With each unanswered wish, a flicker of doubt dimmed her enthusiasm. Just as she turned to leave, a voice like wind chimes in the afternoon breeze startled her. Please, child, it murmured, is the magic word. Penelope spun around, searching for the source. But, but I wish, she stammered. The voice chuckled, a melody weaving through the leaves. Wishes whispered, without kindness, are like seeds thrown on stone. They need a gentle word to bloom. Hesitantly, Penelope picked up a remaining pebble. This time, her voice, hushed and sincere, carried only one wish. Please, she whispered, let me find friends who shared my love for stories and the whispers of the wind. The well shimmered, kaleidoscope of light dancing within. Then, as suddenly as it began, the magic settled. Penelope frowned, a pang of disappointment echoing in her chest. But as she turned to leave, a rustle in the bushes caught her eye. A girl, about her age, with eyes the color of the mossy well, stepped out. Did you make the wind sing today? She asked, her voice as melodic as the chimes. Penelope, speechless, could only nod. Soon, another girl emerged, and then another, each drawn by the well's gentle magic and Penelope's kind wish. Before long, the clearing buzzed with laughter and tales shared under the whispering leaves. Penelope realized that day, friends weren't granted wishes. They were attracted by kindness, like bees to blooming flowers. The well, it seemed, didn't grant wishes. It amplified them, turning a gentle please into a symphony of friendship. From then on, Penelope never hoarded wishes. She learned to speak them with care, letting her please bloom into smiles, shared secrets, and adventures whispered amidst the wind-kissed trees. And though she never got that shimmering dress or talking pet, her heart, filled with the warmth of true friendship, felt like a castle adorned with laughter, more precious than any wish could ever be. The End The Dancing Sunflower A little sunflower named Sunny lives in a meadow. Sunny is different from the other sunflowers because he never faces the sun and remains sad and lonely. One day, a group of animals passing by the meadow notices Sunny's sadness and decides to help him. They introduce themselves as Marvin the mouse, Rosie the rabbit, and Sammy the squirrel. They can see that Sunny's lack of joy is due to his inability to dance. Marvin, being a talented dancer himself, teaches Sunny some simple dance moves. Together, they practice every day, finding joy in the rhythmic movements. Slowly, Sunny starts to feel a spark of happiness within. As word spreads about Sunny's dancing, more and more animals come to watch. The spectacle brings a smile to everyone's face, including Sunny's. Even the other sunflowers, who have always faced the sun, begin to dance along. One sunny day, as Sunny performs his most graceful routine, he notices that he is indeed facing the sun. 
It turns out that the more he dances and embraces his inner joy, the more he automatically turns towards the sun. Sunny realizes that his sadness stems from not being true to himself and letting his joy shine. From that day forward, Sunny becomes the happiest and most vibrant sunflower in the meadow. His dancing brings joy not only to himself but also to the animals and the other sunflowers. The meadow becomes a haven of happiness and laughter. The end. The singing bird. Once upon a time, in a lush green forest, there lived a little bird named Bella. Bella had a beautiful voice and loved to sing all day long. However, one day, while Bella was flying high in the sky, she accidentally flew into a tree branch and broke her wing. Unable to fly, Bella's heart sank with sadness. As Bella sat on the ground, a feeling of despair washed over her. But then, she remembered her love for singing. She began to sing a soft, soothing melody. To her surprise, the animals of the forest started gathering around her, captivated by her beautiful voice. Word of the singing bird spread throughout the forest, and soon. Animals from far and wide came to listen to Bella's songs. Squirrels, rabbits, and even the wise old owl all gathered in awe and joy. Bella's voice brought comfort to the sick and made the sad animals smile again. One day, a young girl named Lily heard about the singing bird and decided to visit the forest. Lily had been feeling down lately and hoped Bella's songs could lift her spirits. As she entered the forest, she followed the sound of the melodious tunes until she found Bella perched on a branch. Bella's voice resonated with Lily, making her troubles melt away. Lily realized the power of music to heal and bring happiness. She decided to take Bella home and care for her injured wing. Lily and Bella became best friends, and Bella continued to sing her heart out. Lily would play the piano while Bella chirped along, creating the most beautiful harmony. The two of them would have many concerts for their friends and family, spreading the magic of music everywhere they went. The singing bird became famous in the forest, and animals came from near and far to listen to Bella's enchanting songs. Bella's broken wing was a reminder that sometimes life brings challenges, but just like Bella, we should always find joy in what we love and share it with others. The end. The Joyful Rainbow Once upon a time in a faraway land, there lived a colorful and joyful rainbow named Roy. Roy loved to spread happiness and bring smiles to everyone who saw him. One day, Roy would stretch across the sky, his vibrant colors shining brightly as he arched gracefully from one end to the other. Children would point up in awe, and adults would stop to admire his beauty. One day, as Roy was making his way across the sky, he noticed a sad little girl named Lily sitting in her backyard. Lily had lost her favorite toy, a stuffed bunny named Benny and she couldn't help but feel down in the dumps. Upon seeing Lily, 
Roy knew he had to do something to cheer her up. With a burst of color and a sprinkle of magic, Roy swooped down from the sky and landed next to Lily. His vibrant hues danced around her, creating a mesmerizing spectacle. Lily's eyes widened with wonder as she realized she was standing in the presence of a real life rainbow. Roy gently whispered, "Don't be sad, Lily." Life is full of colors and joy. Sometimes all we need is to look around and appreciate the beauty that's right in front of us. Lily wiped away her tears and looked around her. She noticed the flowers blooming in her garden, the birds singing their sweet melodies, and the sunlight filtering through the leaves of the trees. In that moment. Lily realized that even though she had lost her toy, there were still so many things to be grateful for. From that day on, Lily and Roy became best friends. Lily would often sit in her backyard, gazing up at the sky, and Roy would paint the clouds with his radiant colors. Together, they spread joy and reminded everyone they met to cherish the little joys in life. The end. The ticklish caterpillar. Once upon a time, in a lush green garden. There lived a little caterpillar named Charlie. Charlie was unlike any other caterpillar because he was ticklish. Whenever someone touched his soft, fuzzy body, he would burst into fits of giggles and wiggles. One sunny morning, as Charlie was exploring the garden, he came across a group of new friends: a ladybug named Lily, a bumblebee. Named Benny, and a friendly butterfly named Bella. They were fascinated by Charlie's ticklish nature and loved making him laugh. Charlie felt happy and accepted. As the days passed, Charlie started noticing some changes in himself. His body was growing longer, and he had little bumps appearing on his back. Charlie didn't understand why he was changing, and it made him feel worried. He shared his concerns with Lily, Benny, and Bella, who assured him that change is a natural part of life, and that they would be there for him no matter what. They encouraged him to embrace the journey and find joy in the process. As time went on. Charlie's body transformed into a beautiful and colorful chrysalis. Inside, he went through a remarkable metamorphosis, growing wings and turning into a magnificent butterfly. When Charlie emerged from his chrysalis, his friends were in awe. They cheered and celebrated his transformation. Charlie realized that even though change can be scary. It can also lead to something wonderful. Throughout his journey, Charlie learned an important lesson: to find joy in unexpected places. From being a ticklish caterpillar to a magnificent butterfly, he discovered that laughter and playfulness can bring happiness, even during times of change. The end. The brave little pup. Max is a young and adventurous puppy who lives with his loving owner Emily. One sunny afternoon, while playing fetch in the park, Max suddenly sees something that catches his attention. It's a stray cat, meowing and looking lost. Max's kind heart prompts him to approach the cat. And try to help. However, 
As he gets closer, he notices that the cat is injured and scared. Without thinking twice, Max decides to bring the cat to safety. Max carefully carries the cat in his mouth and starts his journey to find help. Along the way, Max encounters various challenges, from crossing busy streets to facing big dogs. He fearlessly overcomes each obstacle, determined to find someone who can take care of the injured cat. After a long and tiring journey, Max finally arrives at the veterinary clinic. The kind veterinarian examines the cat's wounds and provides the necessary care. Max's act of bravery and loyalty touches the veterinarian, who decides to adopt the cat and give her a loving home. Max, proud of his accomplishment, returns to the park where he initially found the cat. As he scans the surroundings, he notices a familiar face. It's Emily, his owner, looking worried and calling out his name. Max joyfully runs towards Emily, wagging his tail uncontrollably. Emily is relieved to see him safe and sound. Max leads Emily to the veterinary clinic, where she is pleasantly surprised to find the injured cat in the loving care of the veterinarian. The End The Loyal Guardian In a peaceful neighborhood lived a loving family with two young children named Emma and Max. Their loyal and brave dog, Oliver, was their best friend and protector. One sunny morning, a strange creature appeared in their neighborhood. It had long tentacles, sharp teeth, and glowing red eyes. The creature seemed dangerous and frightening. Emma and Max's parents were worried about the safety of their children. So, they asked Oliver to keep watch and protect them. Oliver took his duty seriously and promised to do whatever it took to keep Emma and Max safe. Oliver began his quest to protect his family by patrolling the neighborhood day and night. He barked loudly whenever he spotted the creature lurking around. Oliver's barks alerted the neighbors, and they also decided to help keep an eye out for the strange creature. As days passed, Oliver faced many challenges in his mission. The creature was elusive and seemed to vanish whenever Oliver got too close. But Oliver never gave up. With each challenge, he learned new ways to protect his family. One day, Oliver's loyalty and courage led him to a hidden cave in the woods. Inside the cave, he discovered the creature's lair. Determined to keep his family safe, Oliver bravely entered the cave. Inside, he found the creature sleeping peacefully, unaware of Oliver's presence. Without hesitation, Oliver grabbed a nearby rope and tied the creature's tentacles together, ensuring that it couldn't harm anyone. He then called for help, and the neighbors quickly arrived to take the creature away. Emma and Max's parents were incredibly grateful to Oliver for his bravery and loyalty. They realized that Oliver's love for his family had no bounds. From that day forward, Oliver became known as the loyal guardian of the neighborhood. The Ant The Kind-Hearted Giant Once upon a time in a peaceful valley tucked away between rolling hills, 
there lived a kind-hearted giant named Gidgen. Gidgen towered above everything else in the valley, but had a gentle heart and a deep respect for all living creatures. Every day, Gidgen would wander through the valley, taking care not to harm the delicate flowers or disrupt the homes of the smaller creatures who called them home. The squirrels, rabbits, and birds soon grew accustomed to the giant's presence, and they saw that he meant no harm. One sunny morning, as Gidgen strolled through the valley, he came across a group of frightened rabbits huddled together. They chattered nervously amongst themselves, their tiny hearts racing with fear. What's wrong, little friends? Gidgen asked, his voice sounding like a low rumble. The rabbits pointed to a thorny hedge that was blocking their path. We we can't find a way through. It's prickly. One of the rabbits stammered. Gidgen bent down and carefully pushed the branches aside, creating a safe passage for the rabbits. There you go, my friends. No need to fear, for I will always help you when you are in need. From that day on, Gidgen became known as the kind-hearted giant who showed mercy and kindness to all. His generosity spread throughout the valley, and animals from near and far would seek his help whenever they faced challenges. One day, Gidgen heard a loud cry coming from the sky. He looked up and saw a baby bird named Benny, perched precariously on a high branch. Benny had flown too high and was too afraid to fly back down. Gidgen's heart swelled with concern as he approached the tree. He knew that if he reached out to grab Benny, he might accidentally harm the tiny bird. With great care, he spoke softly to Benny and offered words of reassurance. Dear Benny, I know you are scared, but I believe in your ability to fly. Take a deep breath and trust in yourself. Gidgen said soothingly. With Gidgen's encouraging words, Benny summoned all his courage and fluttered his wings. Slowly but surely, he managed to descend from the tree and landed safely on Gidgen's outstretched hand. Oh, thank you, kind-hearted giant. I never would have made it without your help. Benny chirped gratefully. Gidgen smiled warmly at the little bird. Remember, Benny, in times of fear and doubt, always believe in yourself. You are capable of more than you think. Word of Gidgen's mercy and wisdom spread far and wide, and animals from all walks of life flocked to the valley to seek his guidance. They learned that regardless of their size or species, Gidgen treated them with respect, empathy, and mercy. As the animals in the valley watched Gidgen, they too began to emulate his kindness. They learned that even the smallest creatures could make a big impact through acts of compassion and understanding. And so, the story of the kind-hearted giant named Gidgen lived on, inspiring generations of animals in the valley to be grateful, merciful, and cherish the worth of every living being. They learned the true strength lies not in size or power, but in the kindness we show towards others. The end. The True Friendship 
in a beautiful forest filled with tall trees and colorful flowers. There lived three best friends: a kind-hearted rabbit named Rosie, a playful squirrel named Sammy, and a singing bird named Bella. They spent their days exploring the forest, playing games, and sharing stories. They were always there for each other, supporting and cheering one another on. Their friendship was strong and unbreakable. One day, as Rosie, Sammy, and Bella were enjoying a picnic near a babbling brook, they noticed something strange. The normally clear and clean water was now dark and murky. Worried, they followed the brook upstream and discovered that a nearby factory was pouring pollution into the water. The friends knew they had to do something to save their forest home. They decided to seek help from the wise owl, who lived deep in the heart of the forest. The owl listened intently to their tale of the polluted brook and the danger it posed to the forest and its inhabitants. In times of trouble, true friendship shines the brightest. The owl said with a wise nod, "You must gather all the animals from the forest, and together we will find a way to stop this pollution." And so, Rosie, Sammy, and Bella set out on a journey to gather their friends. They spoke to the wise fox, the gentle deer, and the mighty bear, convincing them all to join their cause. The group of friends grew stronger as more animals joined, all united to protect their beloved forest. With the help of the wise owl. They devised a plan to peacefully protest outside the factory, spreading the message of the importance of preserving nature. Together, they marched and chanted, their voices echoing through the trees. The message was heard loud and clear, not only by the workers at the factory, but by people all around the world. Use of the animals' brave acts reached the ears of caring humans, who stood up against pollution and fought to keep the environment clean. The factory realized the error of their ways and agreed to stop polluting the brook. The once murky water began to clear, and life returned to normal in the forest. The animals rejoiced, grateful for their true friendship. And the power it held. The end. The lost lamb's lesson. Once upon a time, in a beautiful countryside, there lived a kind-hearted shepherd named Samuel. He had a wonderful flock of sheep, all of whom listened attentively to his teachings. One sunny day, while Samuel was out tending to his sheep, he noticed that one of the lambs was missing. Worried, he searched high and low, calling out for the lost lamb. He could hear the lamb's bleating in the distance. And followed the sound until he found a little lamb stuck in a thicket of bushes. Samuel approached the scared and helpless lamb with kindness and gentleness. He carefully untangled the lamb from the thorns and held it close to his heart, providing comfort and reassurance. The lamb, feeling safe in Samuel's arms, calmed down and trusted the shepherd. With patience and understanding, Samuel guided the lost lamb back to the flock. The other sheep welcomed the lamb with open arms, sensing its fear and offering their support. Samuel explained to his flock the importance of showing mercy and kindness to others, even if they had made mistakes or were lost. The sheep listened intently to Samuel's words. And understood the lesson 
he was trying to teach. From that day forward, the flock became more compassionate and forgiving towards one another. They realized that everyone makes mistakes and deserves a second chance. The End The Joyful Elephant Once upon a time in a lush and vibrant jungle, there lived a young elephant named Ellie. Ellie was a gentle and kind-hearted soul, beloved by all the animals in the jungle. However, Ellie always seemed to be a little sad. One day, Ellie set out on an adventure to find happiness. She searched high and low, but couldn't seem to find what she was looking for. She asked the wise old owl for advice, and the owl suggested that Ellie try laughing. Intrigued by the idea, Ellie decided to give it a try. She took a deep breath and let out a big, hearty chuckle. At first, it felt silly, but soon Ellie couldn't stop laughing. Her laughter echoed through the jungle, and all the animals couldn't help but join in. The once gloomy jungle was filled with the sound of laughter. The birds chirped joyously, the monkeys swung from branch to branch with glee, and even the grumpy lion cracked a smile. Ellie's laughter had brought happiness to everyone. Ellie realized that laughter was the key to happiness. From that day forward, she made it her mission to spread joy and laughter everywhere she went. Every time she met someone feeling sad or down, she would make them laugh until their worries melted away. The animals in the jungle could always count on Ellie to bring a smile to their faces. Ellie's laughter became infectious, and soon the entire jungle was filled with joy and happiness. The End